Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. There is a lot of exciting stuff to talk about today as I dive into the addition of a new animal, more or less right away. Well, pretty much right away. We're gonna be talking about the animal in terms of its Zoopedia entry, as we've started doing lately. And then we're gonna dive into the time lapse, get a nice big space prepared for it. Very excited for this one. And uh, hopefully then afterwards, as we get the animals in, we'll spend some time with them and see them enjoy the space that we built for them. Uh, really quite thrilled with this uh, with this plan I have. In fact, uh, some of you in the comments kind of saw this coming. And uh, I found it pretty funny reading through the comments and, uh, and seeing this get brought up because I was like, that's exactly what I was thinking. And I wonder if I kind of had a tell, if I made it clear what my plan was, or if it was just kind of like, as, as it as it came about, if it became the kind of uh, obvious, you know, thing to do, if it was just like, oh, we, this space has to be used this way uh, because it's presented such a great opportunity. That's how I feel about this space personally. Now, I'm sure the thumbnail and the title has given away which animal it is exactly that we'll be adding. And uh, I'll be completely honest with you, a uh, part of the reason and a part of the driving force for the layout that I'll be building uh, for this enclosure is absolutely the result of an evolving situation. Uh, this was not my initial plan for them. This was not what I was thinking of doing, you know, when I first thought about how I'm going to implement them. Uh, but as we've been developing the space for the hippos, we've naturally ended up with a rather interesting shape that I think would be uh, a great kind of opportunity for us. And it would mirror what's going on with the tortoises. Uh, if I haven't given it away already, it is our situation over here. We have this very nice, long, uh, relatively thin strip that uh, can maybe be used to attain max speed for a particularly fast land animal. We'll have to, of course, uh, take some precautionary methods. We'd have to, of course, uh, try and, you know, seal some spaces off, make sure that the tracks are inaccessible. We we've got some, we've got our work cut out for us, but I do feel like we've got a very interesting space over here uh, for a few different reasons. And I'll, I'll touch on more on that. Uh, I'll touch more on that, sorry, uh, during the time lapse as well, I'm sure. So I'll, I'll leave it for future party leech to discuss all the various factors that came into uh, this consideration. But yeah, this is not what I was planning initially, but when we did the hippo enclosure, so what, like four episodes ago now or so, that's when this thought first crossed my mind. Uh, and then as we went ahead and did the pygmy hippo enclosure, that thought solidified in my mind. And uh, it was quite funny for me to actually see it in the comments brought up as well. Uh, and I just, uh, I kind of like had that smile and nod moment, just kind of like a, yup. You got me. Uh, now, I will say, with regards to the comments of the previous episode, I did read through them. However, I didn't do my second pass. Unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to do that, so I, I do apologize for that. Uh, but there is some really wild stuff coming up for the channel over the next handful of weeks. I know it feels like I say this often, uh, but it's it's been a very exciting year so far. It's also been a very busy year so far. But as a result of that and some time constraints that I'm working around, I wasn't able to uh, do a sort of a double read through of all the comments because I wanted to make sure I did have the time to actually make this episode um, and, and not, you know, have to skip the episode or delay the episode or anything like that. So I hope you all understand and I hope you all kind of, you know, uh, you know, I, I again, I apologize. I hope it's all right. But uh, but yeah, really excited for, for what we're getting to today, um, mainly because it's yeah, it's just it's a uh, very different. And, and as I was saying, just a quick peek over here for those of you that maybe missed it or have forgotten, but uh, Galapagos Grotto over here kind of has it's almost like prototypical look at all these tortoises <laughs> we gotta do something about this that's a lot of that's a lot of them um but yeah this is almost like a prototype of what we're about to uh to, to build over here because you kind of have a long relatively narrow enclosure but of course we're dialing it up uh by several notches over here and it's also uh sort of at, at ground level as it were but anyway let's go ahead and take a look at the zoopedia entry over here and uh, and then we're diving into the time lapse right away and then we'll try and get some uh Hopefully some some good uh, whoops some good specimen uh, into our zoo. In fact, as I take a look at the cheetah just briefly over here, maybe I should consider animal trading and the animal market and see if there are any uh, good ones available right now. And then if not, then maybe after the time lapse we do a second check. Oh, it looks like they are plentiful. Yeah, it looks like they are quite plentiful. Um, though there are some really excellent choices right now. So why don't we go ahead and pick at least one up? Because there are also some not excellent choices, to be fair. Uh, we saw one up over here, double 100, 83, 100. I feel like Penda over here. I feel like we can depend on Penda to uh, 
create a wonderful future for our uh, for our cheetahs. So let's go ahead and adopt you from Natura 2000 for 3,000 conservation credits. That's not too much at all. Those are very good numbers. Uh, let's go ahead and send you to the zoo right away. Over to our quarantine over here. I'll have to remind myself to do that afterwards. We get you, and that gives us a female cheetah. Let's go ahead and see if we can't find a good male cheetah as well. Obviously from a different uh, source. These are not bad stats either. 92, 92, 50, 100. Again, those bottom two stats are a bit more variable, uh, but the top two stats are pretty key. Ooh, Yapo over here for just under 3,000. Those are good stats. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Iapo, maybe. Looks kind of different as well. Pale yellow coat. Interesting. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab uh, Iapo here. Adopt you from zoo.international.co. Go ahead and send you to quarantine as well. And I have not forgotten. But yes, thank you for reminding me because I would have forgotten had it not been for the comments. Almost guaranteed I would have uh, forgotten. But we also have the West. Where's my W over here? I know you're here somewhere, buddy. West African Lion. Go ahead and get you get a nice new male for our lovely lionesses, right? Go ahead and get somebody picked up. Oh, those are good stats. Again, immunity is a variable. Those are really good stats for only 1,500. Are you kidding me? All right, let's go for it. From Animalia or Animalia. Not sure how the uh, creator decides to pronounce that, but uh, Olufemi will send you to quarantine as well. There will be some queuing up and stuff like that, but that's all good. I wanted to make sure that while I was already looking at the Trade Center, we took care of that as well. And, uh, yeah, the lines, it's a, it's a, it's a big cat kind of day. It's, uh, oh, this is, this is Saturday's episode, isn't it? Oh my God. It, it, it's, it's not Saturday anymore. It's, it's, it's catter day. Oh my God. It, big, big catter day. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Moving on from that. Let's take a look at the, uh, Zupedia, shall we? The cheetah, the Akinonix jubatus, or is it? Asinonix Ubatus. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with Latin, not to that degree at least, but uh, one of those two. They are vulnerable, only 6,700 in the wild. The cheetah, or Akinonix Jubatus, again, just kind of guessing over here, lives in the savannas and dry woodlands of Central and Southern Africa. They can be recognized by their slim body, deep chest, thin legs, and tail, as well as a dark, as well as dark tear marks on the face. Not to mention their most distinctive feature, their spots. Cheetahs are famous for being the fastest land animal, reaching up to 70 miles per hour when pursuing their prey. This is generally medium-sized mammals such as gazelle and impala. Um, I can, I can, I can never read uh, impala without thinking about some relevant cultural uses of uh, of the term. Impala. Oh, it's 70 miles per hour. That is wild. 70 miles per hour. Now, it's not a sustained run. It is a sprint. Uh, but watching cheetah, uh, Cheetah's um, hunt and, and reach that maximum speed is fascinating. And watching animals try to tire the cheetah out is also fascinating. But yes, that 70 mile per hour is not a marathon. It is a sprint. It's a short-ish burst. I can't remember the exact, uh, like, details of it off the top of my head, but that's something to keep in mind, that they can't just, like, go from 0 to 70 and stay like that as if they were, you know, out for a stroll. It, it is their top speed. And there are limitations. The cheetah population is in decline due to habitat loss, their territory having been overtaken by farmland and urban buildings. It is probable that their con conservation status will go from vulnerable to endangered in the near future. Well, that's unfortunate. Conservation efforts by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, Zoological Society of London, and range-wide conservation program for cheetah and African wild dogs include promoting ecotourism and creating reserves around land where cheetahs are prevalent in order to maintain their territory and prevention of poaching. Okay, so those are a couple of education points that we might want to touch on, right? Poaching, um, uh, ecotourism, and uh, uh, land uh, land usage, or, or whatever it's called. There's a, there's there's a there's a there's an education board for that as well but there there are a couple of options if we wanted to explore those the natural habitat as you can see um a little spread it's not just africa so this this is a little this ain't that ain't cool that's not cool that's that's this isn't africa that's 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 what <laughs> one of these is wrong and i'm not sure i'm not sure which one uh but anyway they're pretty widespread um but only 70, sorry, 6,700, even less than I was going to misspeak. 6,700 of them spread across this much space. Uh, they are 
sort of acclimated to grassland and desert biome. So it's going to be a relatively plain space. I'm hoping we can get the odd tree here and there and some rocks to really break up the space. Uh, but I do want them to have this like basically like sprinting track almost uh, is uh, is the idea I'm playing on over there. And since they only need 705 meters square as far as land requirements, I think we'll be okay. I do want to give them some water as well. I don't know if it'll be like a, a pond or a lake kind of a thing or if it'll be like a running river. Um, could go either way. Uh, they are jumpers, so we can't just use that to like block them off from the uh, from the path or anything like that. But uh, but there are options. There are options, and I think we have more than enough space in this long thin strip. We'll test it out though, just to make sure. Uh, as far as species data is concerned, group size excluding juveniles is one to three, up to two males, up to one female. Oh well, that's interesting. That is not what I would expect, and I'm very curious about that. Two males, one female. Male bachelor group size is one to three. Female bachelor group size is just the one. Wow, very solitary females uh, as opposed to the males. I'm, I'm, I'm really actually quite curious about uh, about some details about that. Um, dominant system, there is none. Mating system is promiscuous. Uh, relation with humans is shy. That's important to note. We'll need to need we'll need to use some uh, one way glass. Uh, and guests cannot enter the habitat. Yeah, no surprise there. Mm, I'm a little worried about the shyness and uh, the proximity of the train. We'll have to, huh? Gonna have to figure that out. Gonna have to figure that out. Ho hopefully, it's okay. This is gonna be a bit of an. It's gonna be a bit of an experimental um, enclosure over here. And if we have to make a new one for them down the line and move them somewhere else, I'm comfortable with that. But as I always say, you know, what's life without risks? Let's take this risk. Let's see how the animals feel about it. If they don't like it, we'll make a new space for them down the line. But hopefully, they're fine with it. Size, male average is 32 inch tall at the shoulder, same for females. Life expectancy is 14 years across the board and weight, a slight difference here, 120 pounds for males and 100 pounds for females. Sexual maturity at two years, sterility, supposedly, we're not 100% sure, but around 12 years. Uh, number of offspring per mating event is one to five. Gestation is three months, interbirth is 19 and reproduction in captivity is easy. Wonderful, we're gonna see a lot of little uh, a, a, a bunch of small big cats as well as big big cats i guess all right social needs female cheetahs are solitary animals they generally live and hunt alone except when they're with their cubs which will stay with their mother until they're old enough to cope on their own male cheetahs are often found in pairs or trios that live together and assist each other when hunting these male cheetah groups often become very close and will pine for each other when separated that's very sweet and also very interesting have we seen this kind of behavior among any other animal? I don't think so. So it's, uh, at least as far as we've seen so far, that's a unique behavior for the cheetah. I did not know this, and that is fascinating. All right. Reproduction. Males will track fertile females by the scent of their, of sorry, of her urine, staying together for several days once they meet and mating multiple times before separating. A female will be pregnant for approximately three months and then give birth to a litter of between two and five cubs, although larger litters of eight do occur. Cheetah mothers will start teaching their cubs to hunt at five months old, and they will become fully independent at about a year old. Okay, well, you haven't answered my curiosity about two males, one female. That is not the standard uh, kind of expectation, I guess. Like, how does that relationship work? Are these just like males that have separation anxiety with each other because they're pining for each other and so they stay together? I'm, I'm not being I'm not being facetious there. There's like a I'm, I'm actually genuinely asking, like, is this a matter of like, you know, really close friends uh and and thus they don't want to separate is this an example of you know is this like a setup for a for your average like comedy movie is this a, how does this work how have you not touched on on this over here i'm so very curious i'm sure one of you has the answer and, I, and undoubtedly i'll find it in the comments if there is an answer out there but wild much like these animals wild research status uh, they do have, nah, nothing, nothing, nothing that sets them apart, I guess. Um, though I do love watching them use the scratching post and the prey scented sacks. I'll probably try and get those in there. Uh, the ro rotation line feeder is fun as well. Okay, sure. Again, it would be nice if every animal had at least one unique element, right? No interspecies enrichment, no surprise there. And of course, there are the world records that we are uh, not yet involved in because we don't yet have any cheetahs. But that's about to change. Well, actually, technically, that's already changed, because we do have them. Now, the plan is for this to extend from here up to here, because I have different plans 
what's going on down over in this area. Hopefully I can execute them. Hopefully this is enough space. It probably is. I always lose a sense of scale with this game and, and just how small the people are and just how big our zoo is. Um, so yeah, this is definitely enough space for the cheetahs. With that said though, folks, uh, I do believe without further ado, it is... Yeah. Folks, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, I am really quite pleased with how this time lapse turns out. I have a couple of, uh, I guess you could say, I, have, I got a couple of questions for you after the time lapse is done. Um, a couple of uncertainties, I suppose, if you will. But uh, overall, I am uh, pretty pleased. And in fact, as today's session goes on and as we get the animals in there and they start uh, using I want to say using the space, I should say using part of the space, uh, I, I, uh, I I end up really quite really quite pleased. Um, it's it's a very different shape than the usual. It's a very different uh, um, kind of layout than the usual. I'm I'm rather rather than trying to keep everything together or you know multiple copies of the uh, uh, the, the, the 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 necessities like I did with the. Uh, the, the tortoises i'm able to actually spread stuff around over here because we have a rather fast animal it's literally the polar opposite actually uh to the last time we we made a space that was uh, uh long and narrow so it's uh it's it's interesting it's interesting to see how different uh the two are approached it's also just uh, overall just a fun use of the space that might otherwise have been either unused or um you know split up and used in a rather let's say uh, plain fashion, I guess. Um, not sure exactly uh, how to phrase it, but uh, you know, there were there were a lot of different ways that this space could have been used, and I think this is a rather uh, fun way. Maybe, hopefully, a little unexpected, at least to a certain degree. Uh, I know some of you, like like I was saying earlier, and I think I'll say again after the time lapse. I know some of you kind of spotted the opportunity over here, uh, which is great. But hopefully, some of you are, uh, you know, taken aback or surprised or otherwise. Uh, you know, caught off guard with the plan over here because uh, I quite like it. Um, anyway, you can see we have a little cave at that corner over there. That's kind of where I want the guys, these guys, to uh, rest and relax and sleep and uh, and eat as well. That's why we've got the uh, the food over there. But on the flip side is where I want them to have access to water. So I'm hoping that you know, the vast majority of their um, activity, I guess, will take place on that far end. Uh, but then on on this end they'll have uh, they'll have to come down here for for water and things like that as well. Now I don't know if this will be inconvenient for the animal. I don't know if they'll actually um, be bothered, I guess, by it or uh, or, or otherwise just uh, thrown off or, or you know just unhappy about the the distance between the the food and drink. But if they are, if you know they're not fans of it, then we can obviously adjust that and make it so that the uh, water is available closer to the food and the resting and everything like that. What I'm hoping is that because they're such fast animals, um, and, and because they actually like you know a decent bit of space, I'm hoping they'll actually traverse all of it naturally. And uh, eventually, inevitably, you know, when the time comes for them to chase one need or another, they'll go from end to end and, and we'll see some of that behavior. We'll see, though, but you can see putting a tiny little like oasis almost down over here again, thinking about where they're where the animal is typically found and the sort of designation as far as vegetation is concerned. It was grasslands and uh, desert. And I kind of lean on that desert angle a little bit. I do like myself a good oasis. I'm not, not trying to over uh, overdo it over here. Um, also trying to make sure I'm very cognizant of the fact that we have similar ish structures uh, in, in a couple of other uh, enclosures like the, um, you know, the zebras and the, uh, the giraffes. They have a very similar kind of an idea where there is a you know, something of an oasis at the far end of their enclosure. So I don't want to I want to make sure that I don't like I want to make sure that even if I'm following a similar, um, uh, you know, general idea behind the layout. Uh, it, it doesn't feel like a, a replica or what have you. It feels different enough uh, that it kind of stands on its own. Um, so I try not to overdo that oasis feel to it. And a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm having, a hard, having a hard time with uh, with words today. It's been it's been it's been, it's been one of those days. <laughs> it's been one of those days. Uh, this this episode, I'll be honest with you, this episode almost didn't exist because uh, there's a lot going on, and uh, I'm I, I am uh, I'm a little bit on the tired side. Uh, but I was like, nah, I got I got a cool idea. I really want to execute it. I want to get it out there. I want to share it. Uh, I I couldn't uh, I couldn't like wait to get it done. 
um, and, uh, and and so I, I'm glad we still uh, we still have this episode today. But yeah, I, I apologize if I come across a little uh, a little out of it, but um, but it's not because of uh, anything over here. It's just you know, it's been it's been an interesting it's been an interesting year. I've said this a couple of times. It's been an interesting day, week, month, year. It's been interesting. Uh, but anyway, sorry, back on topic over here as I <laughs> start collecting my words again. Um, this is one of the things that I kind of struggled with at first. I think you'll notice that as well as I, uh, from time to time, I'll pause and I'll, you'll see me kind of like move the camera around and just try to hesitate and then figure out exactly how I want to proceed. But uh, I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that people from the train would be able to catch at least a glimpse of the animal. Um, and so I wanted to create this like f uh, framing mechanism or whatever you want to call it. However, if I kind of kept going further and further, longer and longer, it started to feel a bit too repetitive, um, especially from top down, and I didn't like that. So I end up uh, breaking it up just to try and, I guess, like, yeah, break that repetition, I guess, rather, uh, literally, there's not much else thinking behind that. It's just that I wanted to, as much as I would like to have, like, the, uh, the, uh, the, the column straight across another column straight across another column that starts to feel a little too maybe artificial i mean obviously this is artificial anyway you know it, it, we, we'd have to, I, I guess it's very possible that you blew up the side of a mountain to make this happen sure uh, but there's obviously a sense of artificiality to how this space is laid out in general um but uh but there was something about the the column straight across column straight across. it just it was just repeating too much i don't know it looked it looked ugly for lack of a better word maybe there's a better way to execute and i just haven't like thought of it yet um, but but this was definitely something that I was uh, struggling a little bit with, and I, I think you can I think it comes across even in the time lapse my hesitation to put some pieces down and whatnot. But at the end of it, you know, after we get all the terrain painting done and we get some green put down as well, I put down some nettle, and I will add some more trees. And it, it, tr adding the trees was also in an effort to uh, break up the space more, but also make it feel a little bit different from the uh, you know from like the zebras and whatnot. Um, but uh, but as all that kind of comes in and comes together, I start to feel a bit more comfortable with how this space has been uh, built because it, you know it again it, it's uh, it's different ways of breaking that repetition that same repetition that bothers me. But you can see from up top, you can see me thinking about it too. I'm just like I don't like this. Like I like it overall, but there's some things that I don't like here. And so getting the uh, the green over there actually really helps break that up a little bit and, and makes it feel a bit more like, okay, there's something going on over here. There's been some like thought put to it, isn't it just like copy pasting rocks over, uh, which yeah, I was kind of getting that vibe and I was not liking that. So that definitely helped, uh, I think, bring the space together. And uh, one kind of last major adjustment over here that helps bring the space together, at least in my opinion, is swapping this out. I quite like this path. It's very vibrant. It, uh, it, it brings some life to the space, as you can see from near and from far. Uh, and it also, for me at least, uh, it has an athletic feel to it. I know that might sound weird, but when I see this path, I think about, uh, like, clay tennis courts. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one. Maybe at least one of you out there feels the same. But it makes me think of clay tennis courts. And so I think about running back and forth, running in general, just like athletics in general. And I was like, well, if we're doing the cheetah, if we're playing on this like sprinting thing, that's a nice little like extra layer. Now, that's not the focus though. The primary reason I like it is because it is so colorful. It is so vibrant. It, it breaks up the space a little bit. And even though it is an Australian like DLC path, it's not limited in that way, obviously. It, it isn't uh, necessarily Australian per se. It's just very colorful, uh, you know, like earthen pathing is what it looks like to me and i think quite uh works quite nicely in the space and, and again I, I think it brings the space to life just like a vibrant punchy orange i love it even this time lapse i'm just like it draws my eye to it so much i think it looks quite good and there you can see me kind of like doing a quick like scope check i guess like how does it look up close how does it look far further away um but uh, yeah overall pretty pleased and I, I talk a bit more about my like issues and concerns after the time lapse as well one thing i actually want to mention with regards to that is uh I will be coming back to more cultural inspired spaces as well, but I thought we'd do some natural ones like this one for now. Um, I have seen your mentions in the comments, but for now, folks, with that said, let's go back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse, and I got to say, I'm actually relatively pleased with how this space turned out. I feel like it could use some work still, and I think we might actually come back to it uh, next session to just finesse some parts of it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, I feel almost like I could stick around here for another session's worth of time lapse and 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 I clean up a couple of elements and I'll touch on exactly what I mean in just a moment, or I could move on and add the next animal and then come back to finish that off 
finish this off, I should say, uh, in an episode down the line. I'd love to hear where your heads are at, what you would prefer, what you might like to see next session. Uh, you know, whether we come back and, and, and do a little bit of uh, finessing or if we uh, we add a new animal next session. But what's got me kind of torn is, I mean, it's weird. When I look at it from up on high, I, I kind of feel like hey, I'm not the biggest fan of this being concrete. I mean, there's a little bit of cleanup stuff to do that we can do relatively quickly. Like this is, I mean, this is not a big deal at all. We can go ahead and, by the way, the mixed rock types I was experimenting with. I'm not exactly sure if I love how it looks and feels, but I, I like something to, something to try out, I guess. Experimentation, variety, spice of life, you know, whatever reasoning you want to use. But anyway, uh, when I look from up on high, I just don't know exactly how I feel about this uh, concrete uh, wall with the glass, right? If we get down low, though, it feels all right. Like, I don't I don't mind it when we're down low. In fact, like, I mean, I, I put this, like, colored path down to try and break the space up a little bit and make it feel a bit more vibrant. I feel like that works pretty successfully. Um, but it's funny, you know, when I when I get down low is when I actually prefer this look. Like, it's like, all right, yeah, that's fine. That's completely reasonable. Uh, there's no reason to change it. Because while I like how this looks on the other side, we have this, like, rocky um, I mean, facade. This is quite literally a facade. Um, while we have this going on on that side, I feel like if we do it on both sides, it'll be a little overbearing, perhaps. It'll be a little repetitive. I really wish there were more rock pieces to use. I mean, already I feel like there's a, a fair bit of repetition, which I would rather not have. Like, I feel like I need to break up some of this repetition even further already. And then if I have it on both sides of the enclosure, it becomes a bit much. So I just got to figure that out. I got to figure it out in my head. I was really having a bit of a, a mental block, I suppose you could say, with regards to how I might want to tackle it. And I still haven't come to a uh, solution or a conclusion. So what I think is we'll, uh, I don't know, we'll, maybe I'll come to one by next session. Or maybe I'll, uh, I'll need to like step away for a little bit longer before I can come to something. But overall, I'm really quite liking the space actually. If we get into the enclosure like this, this I'm really quite liking. I feel like it's got exactly the uh, the vibe I was hoping for. It's this very, very long stretch. You can like just barely see into the horizon. It's got that curve as well that makes it, in my opinion, at least feel a little bit longer. It fe See, with a curve, see, here's the thinking with the curve. With a curve like this, it almost feels like it goes on beyond because you can't see the end, because you can't see that final wall at the end. It feels like it could go on for like our, for forever. And because the horizon over here is blocked as well by what ends up feeling rather monumental in, in these like stone structures, it feels like you are in this massive uh, valley, if you will, or this massive just tract of land. It's a phrase I often go back to, uh, and it could be never ending. And that's kind of why I like this like subtle curve, because if it was too sharply curved, it would feel like, um, oh, I'm in like a circle or I'm in a I'm in a curved cornered square, like a curved cornered square, a chamfered square or whatever it's called escapes me right now but because it's this really long wide and subtle curve even from over here it feels almost like oh wow this goes on forever i can't see the end wall over there and that feeling is kind of like replicated on the edges over here like if you're standing over here and you kind of look down you go wow that's that goes on forever um a little less so for the humans but more so for the animals and i do want to you know look out for the animals perception of space as well uh, but then from over here as well, you know, if you're over here, you're just like, whoa, that goes on forever. But again, as a human with a slight shift in, in perspective, you are able to see the trees and whatnot at the end. But again, I, I'm thinking primarily of the animals as far as that effect is concerned. I'm, I'm sure it impacts them as well. I'm sure they can, they, it feels larger for them if they are, um, if they have the, the illusion of space, right? Uh, it's already fairly large, but Make them feel better. Give them even more space. Anyway, what I was getting at, sorry. What I was getting at is I quite like how it looks from down over here. I feel like I like the, the I like how the vegetation is placed. It's sparse, but it's still, you know, present off in the distance. I love these trees. These are always really fun trees. So I'm glad we were able to get one in there. So that looks pretty neat as well. I like the spread of the, uh, you know, feeding and, 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 and sleeping and drinking and all that kind of stuff. Um, and just visually as well. Like, yeah, I'm really quite pleased with it from both angles. I, I like how this space looks and feels as well. Um, so overall, like I would say I'm like at a 90% with this enclosure. Uh, it's just this outer wall. I don't know. Every once in a while, like I'm looking at it now and I'm like, you know what? Actually, no, it's good. I like how it looks. But then I'll come back to it five minutes later and I'll be like, nah, it's missing something. You know, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'd love your insight on that. Maybe what I could do is build some coverings for the path between. You know what? That might actually do the trick if we just go ahead and get like these guys at the same height and then and then enclose this space, build like a little roof or a little canopy or something. It'll break up the space over here, and that might be what this area needs. Um, because already, like, by changing the path over, I was quite pleased with uh, 
with a new look, with a more vibrant kind of segment. Maybe that's what it is. Anyway, enough of my rambling and going through kind of what we did in the time lapse in a slower, more framed approach. Uh, onwards to getting the animals in. In order to do that, of course, we do have to unpause. Again, we kind of purchased animals before the uh, time lapse there, so we have them in quarantine, or at least headed towards quarantine. And hopefully we'll uh, we'll get uh, quick access to them over here. Uh, back over here, by the way, meanwhile, I do have a new keeper hut and a new staff room as well. And as it was pointed out in the comments, I do need to, if I go over to the zoo, over to staff, over to the work zones, I do need to get these guys into Africa West. All of them. Go ahead and scoop all this up. There we go. Nice and easy. Get these guys scooped in as well. And I almost wonder if I shouldn't get uh, Africa Center up in here as well. Because there is a... We're starting to kind of get to that fuzzy middle ground, aren't we? And that's why I wanted to get another staff room and another uh, keeper hut as well. Because there's a lot of animals over here. Like the closest keeper hut and staff room and whatnot. Down over here. And like up over here-ish. Right? So almost feel like these guys are necessary to, to help with the hippos. Um, they'd have to like come down and around. Maybe I should replace where that... Well, not that easy to replace where that entrance is, but it's not the biggest trek. Down, around, up. But the hippos, they gotta go... What is it? Where is the uh, hippo entrance? It's down over here, right? So for the hippos, they gotta go down over to here, and then for the cheetah, it's up over here, so they gotta go down, over, and up over here. So it's, it's relatively close to these, uh, these few enclosures over here. I feel like they'll, uh, I feel like that placement will make a very big difference. Um, well, let's go ahead and take a look at this vet research. Is it actually complete complete or is it still one step away? It is actually complete. All right, the Nile monitor is worth looking at. We have a dead llama, unfortunately, in Manku. Well, Manku, you will be, uh, you will be missed. There's my, there's my translingual, uh, pun there. Playing on, playing on the French for missing. There you go. How about that? How about that? Uh, but no, for real though. Um, what I want to take a look at is... What? So many moving parts. Right. Uh, a couple things. First of all, zoo. Mechanics research. I was reminded in the comments. Thank you very much. Kept forgetting. Oh yes, do have to get some research done over here on the... Oh no, we don't. Because the new DLC doesn't come with new research. Right. Yes, we're covered. All right, cool. We're covered. Wonderful. Uh, however, with that said, there is something to do over here as we bring these animals in. Oh, there's a dangerous fighting due to overcrowding. That's why the Jaguars were unhappy. Go ahead and cross this bridge right now because we've gotten here. Loop you three up over to the Trade Center. Come on now. Good stuff. All right, that'll solve that. Go ahead and get uh, Olufemi. I like that name a lot. I don't know. It's just something. I like that name a lot. I might be butchering it, but I do still like it. Uh, pop you up over here in the Kipuri, and then let's go ahead and get these two. And move you over to the cheetah enclosure. Now, I will need a name for this habitat, of course. So feel free to drop one in the comments down below. We'll get one picked out and hopefully drop that in next session. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep up with our naming. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be nice for once. Um, but apart from that, I want to, of course, as those animals are being brought in, switch on over to our Nile monitor over here and take a look at the fun facts. It's been some time since we've had the chance to uh, go through fun facts for one of our animals within the uh, Elite Zoo South, or rather I should say the Franchise Mode series. So fun fact number one, many female Nile monitors break into termite nests and lay their eggs inside them because the termites repair the damage afterwards and thus shelter the eggs. Now there, what? Well, I don't know, Grace? No, 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 come on. When the clicks go slow, it frustrates me because I should be able to stop that. Now this is a problem. It means our alpha male and alpha female are, uh, are related. Yes, right? Grace, compare your... Oh no. You should be mating with, with Ryan over here. Or like any of these guys too. Oh, there's options. There's options. What are you... Why are you... Go ahead and take these guys off contraceptives, I suppose. Put you on contraceptives. 
Ryan is fine. Jackson is a no-go. Finn is a no-go as well. Cool. Let's see what that does. I mean, I gotta... There's actually a lot to... Oh, man. These guys might need some cleaning up, eh? We've got a lot... Got a lot of dingoes. But Grace is the alpha. Wait. Why does it say... What? Hold on. I go to Grace over here. Her age. What? Ah, that's got to be broken, right? Go ahead and take a look at. Uh, look at this again. Yeah, it's got to be broken. All right. Well, until until she's no longer the alpha, we'll uh, we'll stick with that. And how do I get my alpha male? Where is my? Where is my? This is not the way, is it? Don't forget. How to do this uh, song and dance. It's been so long since I've had to manage uh, dogs. Uh, over to my zoo, over to animals, over to the dingo. And you would expect that here I would see the alpha. We've got our alpha female in Grace and alpha male in Jacob. Jacob, you are related to Grace, aren't you? Yes, you are. Between the two of them, I guess Jacob has slightly better um, size, but you know what, Jacob, the trade center with you, he's got to not be the alpha anymore, otherwise we're not going to see more uh, baby dingoes, um, but, that aside, back to our cheetahs, we're all the way on the other side, oh man, it's a massive zoo, up over here, go on and unpause, and take a look at these other Fun facts. Uh, this is actually a really fun fact. This is a high quality, high tier, top level S rank fun fact. That's very cool. Fun fact number two. When in danger or antagonized, the Nile Monitor will attack with a powerful whip from its long tail. All right, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Fun fact number three. Nile Monitors are preyed upon by martial eagles, which can pick up and carry a lizard weighing up to 8.8 .8 pounds. Eagles are wild. Holy crap. <laughs> that's madness. Um, fun fact number four, Nile monitors are causing the crocodile and alligator population in Florida to decrease because they are so effective at robbing their nests of eggs and hatchlings. That's terrifying to think about. Uh, invasive species, right? Uh, and fun fact number five, Nile monitors never stop growing. They continue to get larger throughout their lives. Well, that's interesting. Now, I don't think it's like the lobster, right? Um, it's, it's got to be different. So lobsters... And feel free to correct me in the comments because the last time I, I read up on this was a long time ago. But, but but lobsters are able to... Lobsters are basically immortal. They will grow and grow and grow and grow uh, and they'll molt. They'll grow and they'll molt, they'll molt. But what ends up happening, what ends up killing them ultimately, is they grow too big. So they're not able to, um, to basically generate the energy required to molt successfully. So they end up having a poor malt. They end up, you know, cutting themselves or otherwise hurting themselves or otherwise having sort of a broken layer of skin that gets infected, and that is ultimately what kills them. Um, it's uh, it's rather fascinating. Um, I've I've always found it fascinating. Uh, I believe it is because they lack uh, telomeres, telomeres, telomeres. I think that's what it is. It, it's slipping my mind right now. Um, but basically, they don't have natural degradation um in their in their the, the, yeah they, they, they don't they don't degrade over time basically they just grow and grow and grow and ultimately they just grow a little too big and they're not able to uh free themselves of the shackles of their previous uh you know shell or skin or what have you they're not able to malt properly and that typically is what causes their uh, their demise so hypothetically throwing this out there hypothetically in a lab, if you were to assist a lobster over its generations or over its lifetime to, you know, go through that malting process, I think you could actually, did I say crab? I meant lobster. I think you could actually um, make a uh, make a giant lobster god in theory. I think I thought I said crab because I said lab. And I'm talking about, yeah, I think I, think, I, think I said lab, not crab. Anyway, lobsters is what I'm talking about. There's obviously more, like, nuance to that conversation. Um... And, and, I mean, if I have anything wrong there, uh, feel free to let me know. Again, I'm not a biologist. I don't know these things, like, in depth. They're not my uh, my expertise. But this is something I learned a long time ago, and I found it pretty fascinating that that's kind of the, uh, the story with lobsters. Um, yeah. 
but I doubt the Nile monitor is like that. I'm sure they sure they never stop growing, but eventually their systems start to degrade and they end up uh, end up passing away. But whatever size they reach, they reach. Uh, I don't think that is modeled in the zoo, in 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 this game rather. I'm pretty sure they have just a size they end up at, and then they, they just kind of stay there. Anyway, these are pretty good fun facts. I mean, <laughs> it's been kind of funny reviewing the fun facts in, in for each animal, but but these were these were good. These were good. I like fun fact number one especially. That is really cool. Uh, that's for me. That's kind of when this game shines the most is when I'm like learning from it, right? All right, moment of truth over here. Can these guys come through? Is this too tightly packed? Looks like it might be. Yeah, okay, we're too tightly packed over here. I had a bit of a feeling that might be the case. Not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and move this over a bit. Well, that guy got out. Move put you over. Might do the trick. Go ahead and pull. Come on. Come on. Push you in a bit and push you in a bit as well. And you know what? I'm just going to save really quickly because if the game does crash, I want to at least get to a, like make sure that it's at a point where we haven't done any drastic changes that need uh, catching up or, or redoing or anything like that. That would, uh, that would throw me off. Let's go ahead and unbox you again. Come on now. Is this seriously still not enough space? Let me see what's going on here. Gift you over a little bit. Because that guy got out. So why why not you? Why not you? Ah, uh, it says they have room here. It must be just because of how they were placed or something like that. But anyway, looking like no escape routes. Looking like they are able to hop on up to some of these rocks as well, which is quite nice. And they of course have this massive expanse to do exactly that in. Oh, go on and run. Ah, uh, probably check as well. Enough space. Uh, too much long grass. Not enough short grass. Okay, good. I wasn't a hundred percent sure. Go ahead and get some more short grass in here then. What was this? Easy problem to solve. And in fact one I like solving. I wasn't sure if they would be fans of long grass. I don't know, for some reason I had this image in my head that was clearly not the correct image, but here. Go. Good stuff, good stuff. Almost there. Won't take much longer. A little long over here, I'm sure. I think I see some actually. Some more out over here. Go. So, overall happy, happy. Yeah, I was trying to be very careful with the trees because I didn't want to put too many down. Yeah, it looks like we're pretty good. Looks like we're fantastic actually. Hopefully they'll enjoy this space. What are you what are you looking at? The stars? Are you stargazing? Such interesting looking creatures, honestly. Now you are quite a specimen. Go ahead and turn these lights on. Go ahead and turn these lights on, I said. Those uh, iconic spots that Zoopedia talked about. Not so much here. You can kind of see tiny little speckles rather than spots, really. That is, I've never, I've never, I've never seen a cheetah quite like this. I didn't know that was a thing. I almost feel like I got the wrong animal in here, you know what I mean? Like, I almost feel like I didn't grab a cheetah and I searched two separate animals by mistake. Very interesting. Very interesting. I do hope to see guests uh, coming here a bit more now that we have another relatively, uh, typically popular animal. I mean, these cheetahs are... Cheetahs are very popular. In fact, cheetahs were also... Uh, I feel like it's almost a pattern now. For a very long time, people have been requesting cheetahs, and I'm like, I have, I have some plans for them. Again, this wasn't that plan. I've had different plans, a variety of plans at different times. But uh, it's just funny to be finally executing on some of these after a uh, long time uh, requests have been coming through. Now, only one of these does not have access to power. I could either suffer and try and establish a solar power plant, or you know what? Fine, we'll have a little skip over here. Done. And let's go ahead and get ourselves some... Speakers too. Additional speaker. You, I could probably pop one down over here. Get you about the cheetah. Go. Um, get some power over here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate you over to here. 
All right. Then duplicate. Ooh. Obviously, I need to assign the actual education material again. Fail you up as well. Oh, I think that does the trick. Overlaps down over here or over here or anything. Yeah, we're good. I can actually scale this one up a bit more as well. There we go. Good coverage. Excellent. And if we really want to, we can scale this one up too. There you go. Learn. Learn about the cheetah. <laughs> Alright, where are they? Not underground. Alright. Kind of chilling over here. Yeah, they're uh, as I was saying, like their 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 shape is very interesting. I find their shape to be particularly interesting. Uh, they don't look like I don't know. They they feel very different from your average uh, big cat, you know. Maybe that's just me. It might it might just be me, but I feel like they have a distinct um, body, especially it's that the length of it and the size of the head to go with it, the length of the legs. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Why are you walking? <laughs> oh, wouldn't mind seeing a sprint. Got get the sun be back there. Oh yeah, there we go. I like that. I like those trees a lot. They they provide some very interesting shapes. Very interesting shapes. Where's our other other buddy over here? Stretching? Oh, look at that. Look at that stretch. <laughs> Do all this brain to sprint in and you sprint in this general direction? Come on. What a sound. A little squeaky, like a, like a little uh, squeaky toy. Squeak, squeaky, squeaky toy? Squeak toy? Sque you know what I mean. A little like a dog toy or whatever that squeaks when you when you squeeze it. You know what I mean. <laughs> We've already checked for escape routes, so it's not like they can escape by jumping over this, so that's good. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, we're generating a bit of a crowd over here now. Now it's hard to tell if it's exactly because of the cheetah or if it's because of the um, you know, easy access now finally coming to fruition, but, but that's cool. Got you running. When they need a drink of water, they have to go to the other side, and I'm hoping because of the distance they'll they'll probably sprint at least partly over. We'll see though. If it's not convenient, if they're not happy about it, then we'll have to move water a bit closer as well. There's plenty of room to do that, of course. I'm also hoping as more of them get added to the group, like as they have cubs and stuff, they'll start moving around a bit more because of how solitary they are. Just running to this thing, eh? <laughs> I mean, you're allowed to do whatever you want, but... Look at that judgment in those eyes. an interesting... <laughs> oh, they're so cute. <laughs> they look so pleased. Look at that. Look at that head shape. There's just something about it that like stands out, doesn't it? In theory, we'd see them at some point race the train, but you know, in practice, not actually. Look at that. God, that looks so good. It's all like regal almost. Okay, there he is. Such an interesting look, the coat on this one. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like if I put this, uh... If I put this as the thumbnail, you know, with the thumbnail kind of like shrunk down at the size and whatnot, at a glance, it's almost like... 
Is that a is that a cheetah or a mountain lion? Like at a glance, at a very quick glance. Obviously, if I if I look at it properly, I'll be like, oh, the head size and shape and the the eyes, like the black lines under the eyes and whatnot. I'd be like, okay, okay that's that's a cheetah. But at a glance, I'm like, is that a mountain lion? <laughs> oh, you're such a cutie. Oh, we're taking a nap. On animation. The detail in the lip curl and stuff. What are you up to down over here? Just the, the, these animations are actually fantastic. Like they've, they've all been good, don't get me wrong, they've all been really good, but like you see how like the lip curls when the tongue goes out and and like like the eye closes and the cheek like like squishes up and stuff? Wow, this, is, this is really cool. Way to next, buddy. Where are we going? We're we going. Man. They're, uh. They're so stagnant, I feel like I'm playing that one Call of Duty level. No Russian. Hey. <laughs> God. Those animations, though, I... Oh, adorable. Can't get over them. Just the way the cheek moves, especially. I'm like, I'm, I'm legitimately... Entranced. A lot of tongue movement as well, actually, just in general. I don't know if it's common among the big cats and I've just been missing it, or if it's something to do with the cheetah, because, I don't know, they're, you know, in the desert and whatnot. But like a lot of tongue movement. It could just be like those are the animations they've made, but I've got more fine control over the camera. You see what I'm talking about, though, right? I don't think I've ever seen another animal really quite be so expressive with its uh, with its tongue. What <laughs> what is that walk animation? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that was uh, that was unfortunate timing. Wow, look at all these. Awesome. Again, it happened because the terrain is kind of funky up over here, but still, like, that's just, uh, that's my luck, right? <laughs> as far as timing is concerned. These guys are taking a pretty relaxed, uh, relaxed approach today, I guess. No, no sprints. Oh, nap time. But you know what? This, uh, this cheetah might be onto something. Maybe it is nap time. Folks, I think this is where we're going to call it a session. Got uh, an escaped warthog over here who I think just walked through some glass and managed to... Wants to check out the cheetah. He's just taking a... He's just taking a tour around the... Uh, <laughs> the food spots. These guys are just like, um... Excuse me? He's hungry. He wants to eat. Maybe a little intimidated by the, uh, the dinosaur over here. <laughs> this is hilarious. This place is emptied out. Nobody wants to be around an escaped warthog. Do you think his uh, aroma lacks a certain appeal? Poor guy. Anyways, we've emergency captured him, but I do think this is where we're going to uh, call it a session, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, slightly different style of build. I quite liked it, actually. I mean, it's, it's it is very different. Uh, and I'm excited to see the animals actually use this space. And again, it, it's just it feels like fun use of space that might otherwise have felt wasted or or might have otherwise gone unused. Or of course we could have like split it into multiple square enclosures. Like that's obviously an option and that's a fair approach as well. But I feel like this was slightly more uh, inventive or creative or alternative use uh, of space that might have otherwise been inconvenient. I quite like it. I, I hope y'all like it as well. Let me know what you think overall. I mean, I keep again. I'm, I'm like. Uh, now that everything's in place and the animal's actually moving around as well, I'm okay with the um, with the con concrete barrier over here. But I'd love to hear your thoughts if you think I should rework this somehow. Maybe I should build a canopy over here. But that wouldn't take too long. We could save that for a beauty pass at a later time. And instead, next session, we could add yet another new animal, which would be, I think, the fastest we've ever added back-to-back -back animals, uh, at least in a very, very, very long time. Folks, let me know what you think. Hope you had a good time. If you did, you know what to do. 
Leave a like, leave a comment. It makes a massive difference in high approach content on the channel. I've already expressed just how big a difference it makes, and I think you've seen it as well if you've uh, sort of heard me talk about it over the last couple of episodes especially. Uh, but apart from that, I want to give a massive thanks to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.